This is the Enrichment Sports Source with your host, John Pennington. Good Sunday morning and welcome into the Enrichment Sports Source. We got a packed house and a packed show today. We got all kinds of guests. There are going to be 10 of us on the show today talking about Tennessee's heartbreaking, but not terrible. We discussed that last night. Bob Hodge and I will bring it up today on the show. Um, Heartbreaking loss, not a bad loss, though. We'll discuss and, and differentiate during the show. We've got a lot to cover. We're just going to go ahead and jump right into it. This first segment brought to you, as always, by our good friends at Enrichment Federal Credit Union. All you folks out there with big credit card bills, you can save yourself cash by transferring your balances to an Enrichment Visa, an Enrichment Visa Gold, or an Enrichment MasterCard. Only 3.49% fixed APR for the first 12 months. Transfer a balance today, get 12 months at 3.49%. Transfer a different balance next month, get 12 months on that one at 3.49%. It's a rolling 12-month deal. Enrichment Federal Credit Union, that is the way to bank. They have eight locations in the Knoxville area. Check them out this week. All right. Uh, we do have, I do want to point this out, we've got a ton of people on the show. I just mentioned it. Uh, here's who's coming up. Shazon Bradley, Chuck Cavallera, Sterling Hinton, Will Overstreet, Bobby Scott, Mike Strange. And as a matter of fact, we actually have cards of these guys. Look at this. We have a fan that sent these in, wanting these autographs. Look, look at that, that stallion in the middle there with that pretty blonde hair. All right. Uh, here's the, here's the, the normal opening kickoff group. We've got Jimmy Himes from the 990. We've got uh, Bob Hodge, the freelancer for the Sentinel. We have David Ligon, former Vol offensive lineman. Guys, thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Um, in the open, we said it's heartbreaking, but not terrible. My view? I thought there were positives to take away. I think uh, Vol fans felt pretty stung last night. Sounds like from listening to part of your show today and from checking out online, it looks like the mood is starting to, to lighten a little bit. I think fans are starting to realize that was a step forward. Uh, that was some progress. So I think heartbreaking, but not a terrible loss. Terrible loss to get your teeth kicked in. This one just hurt. Thoughts on the game? Is it a net positive or net negative? No doubt it's a positive. I mean, you go out and you compete against the number six team in the country. You take them down to the wire and you have an opportunity to win the game. One bad luck break takes it away from you. Uh, they showed the heart of, of what Tennessee's supposed to do out there on the field. Uh, the stadium was alive. You know, the offense was effective. The defense came up with big plays. Um, I mean, it was everything together and what we hoped for. Really, the only negative you had is the loss. Yeah, the I mean, score. <laughs> you, you, you sat there and you look, your offensive line stepped up. Everybody thought it was going to yes. be big time this year. It was big time last night. Pig Howard suddenly becomes a player that looks like he is, he belongs in the SEC and could even have some star potential. Despite the last play, he's, he was a, it, had a great and, and the last yeah. play, I mean, it was fantastic great effort, effort on the yeah, last absolutely. play. I yeah. mean, you know, bad things happen sometimes, but, but I think you take away a ton of positives from this. Plus, you take away the positive that for a day and the first time in a long time, Neyland Stadium was a hard place for the other team to be. And there were a lot of recruits on hand to see it. Jimmy, yeah, your thoughts? 189 yards rushing against a Georgia team that gave up 77 to LSU. Uh, I liked uh, the, what Worley did in the second half. Mm -hmm. I thought Tennessee's offense wasn't very good in the first half, but when I do my thumbs up, thumbs down, I had more thumbs up for Tennessee than I did down. And I, I thought there were a lot of good things that they did. Uh, Murray's an excellent quarterback, and I know that George had some injuries along the way, but still I give Tennessee a lot of credit for holding them down. Murray's worst passing game this year had been 298 yards. He had more than 100 yards less against Tennessee. So I, I thought there were a lot of things Tennessee did well during the course of that game. Yeah, I want to talk about the injuries in a second. For those that are out there, I thought it was, I was talking to uh, my father last night. He said, wow, this team's just cursed. And I thought, <laughs> well, you know, you did have the LSU game. And then I got to thinking, if all fans are having a hard time, spotting the positives today it's understandable let's look at this 2005 alabama actually has a painting of this that fans can buy Corey anderson's fumble through the end zone they call it rocky stop that was the beginning of the really the you know philip former went 29 21 his last four years after 05 and cost him his job then lane kiffin came in and in 2009 Two blocks in one game, not just one field goal block, but two blocked, and the last one was blocked by a man's midsection. Then you go to 2010, enter Derek Dooley, and you go to LSU, you think that one's won, you think that game's won. You have 13 men on the field, something I've never seen before or since. Then, later that year, same thing, same pose, same thing, two guns. North Carolina didn't get the playoff before the gun sounded, then they got a chance to kick a field goal before the second gun sounded. It was like Bob Hodge's house on a Saturday night. Guns all over the place. <laughs> a year later, no quarter from Kentucky. No quarterback. That's the receiver who played quarterback that day, and they ended a quarter-century reign by UT over them. And then finally, you step ahead to yesterday. 
and just that much, let it slip by that much. Um, so it's understandable if all fans are feeling cursed on that one, but I, I, I agree with everybody else. I think once you get past that feeling, I think that the coaching you saw yesterday, no. that no. gives you reason if you're a fan to say, you know what, I'm going to put some more trust in these guys. I think they should have trusted them to begin with, but I think that helps them build some trust with a lot of people. Well, I, they, it was sort of interesting that at the end of the first half, it was like there wasn't enough trust in the offense, and, yeah. and it was very conservative. But in the fourth quarter, Butch Jones was more aggressive, rolling the dice. He went for four. He went for three fourth downs, two of them inside his own territory, and I thought two of those calls were just brilliant. Mm -hmm. now, one of them was just a, a run to raise on Neal, and he got the yard. But those other two calls, were, I thought, were outstanding calls. We got it. We, we'll talk about that one in the next segment. I wanted to ask you guys. You mentioned the injuries that they had. And they top two running backs gone. Top three receivers gone. I thought the chemistry between Murray and his wideouts looked questionable mm -hmm. uh, right up to that last drive where he looked tremendous. Uh, that said, do you take anything away? Do you have to temper it a little bit because of Georgia having that many people? I don't. Out? I mean, yeah. t Tennessee went out and played physical. They got hurt. That happens in the game. It could have easily have been Tennessee's guys getting hurt. You go out, you play physical. That's their issue if they're playing high and getting their knees blown out. I mean, you're playing. Wow. <laughs> you're you're being <laughs> tough, and that's the game of football. It's not a pansy game. And so they went out, played tough, took it to Georgia, and you know some players went down, and that's the way it goes. And Tennessee played well and put themselves in position to win. You go back a couple of years, Tennessee had a good chance to go down to Florida. Win the ball game. Justin go. Hunter gets hurt on the first series for Tennessee. Did anybody at that time say, well, you know, Florida, you know, you, you got to take a little bit away from them? No. And I, I, I agree with David. I mean, it's a game where injuries happen, and, and it happened for Georgia. Bad luck, bad news. But, no, I don't take anything away from Tennessee. Jimmy, even with, Tennessee, even with Georgia's injuries, I think you could make a case that Georgia still had more talent on the field than Tennessee did. So I, I, nobody's feeling sorry for Tennessee who came in with all the freshmen and all the walk-ons and a bunch of guys that were having to play 80 snaps piece. Georgia was without four guys coming in. They lost four guys in the game. And yet they still had this Conley guy that made a brilliant one-handed catch. Yeah. Uh, Wooten is a pretty good receiver, caught the game winner. And oh, by the way, this freshman they tried out there, the third team running back gained over 100 yards. So they still, what they've been able to do because of the continuity of their staff, they've been able to recruit and overcome yeah. injuries. And that's yep. something that Tennessee, with a thin roster, is not able to do. Their fourth-string running back, Douglas, also had the 30 yards. Yes. Yeah. Play that made the, big on the, the last drive. The key play of the game. The key play of the game on that last drive. I know you've been barking about that, so there you got it in. Thank All you. Right. <laughs> uh, very quick question. Did Georgia let Tennessee score? I didn't think so. I thought they were fighting on the offensive line. If you're letting them score, I think you step back and just let them score. I don't think they did that. Am I wrong? No, I, I can't. I mean, hey, who knows, but – in the game of football where you're a competitor, I can't ever imagine a coach just saying, let them score and give up. I mean, that's that's not what the game's about. It's not about giving up. It's fighting till the end. Well, there's I, Go ahead. I was about to say, I think what you were about to say, there are circumstances where you do let them score right. because it helps your team. But I've never been a part of a in game. In the recent right. let them score. Holmgren did it. Belichick did it both in Super well, Bowls. Was it Holmgren that did it or was it Shanahan yeah, that did it? Uh, yeah, it was Holmgren. Green, but yeah. 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 It, it, you watch number 58 for Georgia, their linebacker. He gets held, and he's complaining to the officials he gets held. If you're letting them score, that is not only letting them score, that's saying, now, guys, we want to let them score, but don't act like we're letting them score. <laughs> go out there. So, no, I don't think they let them score. All right. And, 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 let me, oh, I was going to say that quickly. Rick on his teleconference on Wednesday was asked, is there ever a situation where you'd let a team score? And he said, yes. Now, and that, so it crossed my mind. I don't yeah. know that they did or didn't, but when he said that on Wednesday, I thought, well, by golly, here – now, somebody had a vision. <laughs> well, somebody was thinking about it, but I, I don't think they did, but I never heard his response to that. I like to ask him that. I want to make a couple of quick observations here before we catch a break. First, anybody out there who's blaming Pig Howard for the fumble and everything, I know right after the game there were. Football is more than just one play. That was a big play. You could trace that back to the personal foul, taunting penalty on the opening kickoff you would have had Georgia pin deep. Instead, they wind up kicking a 56-yard field goal. Now, the game plays out differently, but if Georgia doesn't have that three points at the end from that field goal on the first drive, who mm -hmm. wins that game? So yeah. you can't just hang it all on, on Pig Howard. The last thing, uh, I don't know if you'll ever see a wild game like that in Neyland Stadium again. Look at some of the, the, the remarkable things yesterday. 
Great uniform for Tennessee. Longest field goal ever versus Tennessee. Block punt for a touchdown. The SEC career record for pass yards set by Aaron Murray. Three Georgia starters lost to knee injuries. Three fourth down conversions by UT. A last minute TD drive by Georgia. Overtime, a fumble through the end zone, and a game winning field goal. Now, if you went to that game, <laughs> folks, you got your money's worth. And you're going to get your money's worth on the Sports Source today. When we come back, we're going to have more topics, more conversation, more guests. Come on back. <laughs> 